President Trump saying his police and military supporters could make things very bad for his opposition. Here's the quote that he said to Breitbart. This is the president. You know, the left plays a tougher game. It's very funny. I actually think that the people on the right are tougher, but they don't play it tougher, okay? I can tell you, I have the support of the police, the support of the military, the support of the bikers for Trump. I have the tough people, but they don't play it tough until they go to a certain point. And then it would be very bad, very bad. Abby Phillip is out front at the White House. Abby, this sounds like a threat. Well, sir, a lot of people are certainly taking it that way, Aaron. And it's not the first time that President Trump has used almost identical language to talk about his supporters in this way, talking about the military, the bikers for Trump and others who he says are tough and tough in a very specific way. The president also implying in this quote that the left is tough, too. Uh, he used this language when he was talking about uh, Antifa, saying that his supporters might be able to go up against Antifa at a campaign rally back in September in Missouri. And and many people remember back in the campaign, President Trump talked about Second Amendment people, Second Amendment uh, people <coughs> referring to people who uh, advocate for gun rights in this country, being able to stop Hillary Clinton from uh, appointing judges, uh, left leaning judges to the court if she were elected president. So this is a president who has repeatedly used this kind of language, sometimes playing fast and loose with his words and leaving it open to interpretation for people uh, to believe that this is a door open to uh, people who might want to use violence in the public sphere. The president almost never clarifies, and the White House certainly doesn't either, uh, but a lot of people raising more questions about the president's language here and why he doesn't do more to be clearer about his words if violence is not, in fact, what he is implying here, Aaron. All right, Abby, thank you very much, and a really good point, right? If violence isn't what you're trying to talk about then why are you talking about things getting very bad when you're talking about your supporters as the police and the military as monolithic groups out front now steve cortez he's on president trump's 2020 re-elect advisory council and keith boykin former clinton white house aide keith when you hear the president say things could get very bad very bad uh if police and military the police the military get tough what do you think he's saying I think he's clearly threatening violence uh, or hinting at the possibility of violence. It's a part of a pattern that we've seen from Donald Trump going back to the presidential campaign when he would consistently talk about he wanted to punch people in the face, tell people to knock the crap out of protesters. He offered to pay the legal bills for, for people who yep. roughed up protesters. He just consistently behaved in a way that was detrimental to creating a collegial atmosphere in a, in a presidential race. And he doesn't show any sense of he's, he's learned anything since he's become president. Steve? You know, look, I, I think it's important uh, here to be very precise in, in talking about what the president actually said. And he did not in any way infer or say uh, that he was going to use the military, meaning in an official capacity or the police in any way. What he's saying is among those groups, he has enormous support. And that's very clearly true. And he's saying that those groups uh, can in defense can defensively uh, act with force if they have to, because there is no doubt that what? violence Wait, from Steve, the left we, is so already talking about, about having the military. In a, in a violent confrontation with the left in this country? No, I, I just said the opposite. I'm saying you said supporters of his to. who... No, no, support... No, no, no. This is exactly what I'm saying, Aaron. He's not saying the military or the police are going to take action. He is saying uh, that among those groups, he has enormous support. Many, m many, in you fact, did most say that, but then you continued to say they could, ri they, could ha they could fight okay. in defense. And, he and said I'm saying very, as very individuals... Bad. No, no. And as individuals, not as a military force, not as police forces, as individuals, if they need to, they will defend themselves because we've seen a market rise oh, in serious on. violence from the left, from Antifa and from other groups. Look, Steve. they are, no, don't, you can't blow this off. They are shooting congressmen. They are punching student activists in the face. They are rousting speakers from podiums on campuses across this country. And what he's saying is his huh. supporters are Steve. tired of being pushed around. Steve. It's you, never Steve. okay to we, instigate we, violence, we, but it is very okay, okay. to defend yourself Steve, and, we, and he's saying that if that's necessary if the left continues the prevalence of violence this that, is that outrageous, his supporters Steve. will be forced to defend themselves Steve, we've never had a president like this before who's not only encouraged violence in his campaign while a black woman in louisville was pushed around or a black man in, in in fayetteville was was 
was punched in the face. We we saw that dur <coughs> during the uh, during the actual presidency of this guy, he went to uh, Montana and he praised Greg Gianforti, a congressman, for body slamming a reporter. We have people who are out there who are Trump supporters who are sending bombs to this office at CNN where I sit today. People who have been engaging in violent activity. The president of the United States has encouraged right. this type of behavior, or at least hinted that he doesn't no. doesn't disapprove of no, it. He when has Charlottesville not. happened, when people when violent people were actually marching with tiki torches in Charlottesville. The president said they were very fine people. This is a guy who has a history no, he did of not stoking say that. the... He no, he said didn't. there were very fine people on both sides. This is a guy no. who has a history on of stoking the flames of, the monument of debate. violence. That's an incredibly important distinction. He said there were both peop fine people on both sides of the monument debate, and there are fine people on both <laughs> sides. That's a serious debate. So you, it's a historical he debate. Say he, did not say, he did not say there were no. fine people on both sides Steve, of that why, protest. Why did he did not say even that neo-Nazis were sure fine people. Defense. It's fact, a good one, but no one's even tried in, to use it till you just in, tried to in, use it now. In fact, he said exactly the opposite. He gave not a speech true, from the White House uh, where he completely denounced racism. He called it, quote, repugnant no. uh, to Americans, any form what, of racism. So he, he actually very did, specifically denounced the neo-Nazis who were why there. Why did he and, offer and, to pay the again, legal keep, bills for people who were, who were roughing up people in, in his campaign rallies? Why did he go to the police chiefs and tell them t that it was okay to engage in police brutality and rough up suspects? Why did he invite Ted Nugent to come to the White House for an Oval Office photo op after Ted Nugent threatened Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama with a machine gun. This guy has a mm -hmm. history of playing loose with okay. his words, and it's not helpful in a country that's already on the edge. When you talk about a country Look, already I, on the I, edge, can I just play, can I just play um, what Michael Cohen said last week? Forget the messenger for a moment, Steve. Let me just play what he said. Well, I can't. Given my experience working for Mr. Trump, I fear that if he loses the election in 2020, that there will never be a peaceful transition of power. And this is why I agreed to appear before you today. There are people who have that fear. A lot of people. There's people on the left, there's people on the right. When the president says, I have the support of the police and the military, and if the other side doesn't, uh, it, doesn't it, plays it, plays it tough, it'll get to a certain point, and then it would be very bad, very bad. Isn't that the specter that a lot of people hear, Steve? No. Now, listen, I think he should be more careful with his words. I do. I think, for example, during this interview, he should have said it's never OK to instigate political violence. Never. It's OK to defend yourself. It's not OK to be an instigator. And I wish he had said but Steve, that. He doesn't uh, say it. He knows are... he could say it. He chooses not to say it. No. Look, here's the here's the difference, though. Uh, you know, I think what you're doing tonight, Aaron, and what media has done to him since he entered politics is always ascribe the very most nefarious interpretation possible of his words. The American people don't hear him that way, though. We Are you hear him as somebody who speaks me, very Steve? plainly, who Are doesn't you? speak in a lawyerly or political manner. So, for Are instance, when he said, and Abby mentioned in the preview to this story, <clears throat> she mentioned that, and I had to fight this a lot during the campaign. Uh, she mentioned his uh, talking about the Second Amendment supporters who could stop Hillary. What he meant was not that they were going to shoot Hillary. He meant that they could use their political power as a political force to stop her judges, if necessary, in the Senate, okay, if okay, she okay. were to become president play? and no, no, nominate no, no, no. anti-Second Amendment I want to play. Amendment I wanna play. Hold on, hold on. Everyone stop for a second. I'm going to play some things that he said. The last one is the one about Hillary and the Second Amendment. Um, I'm going to play it. Knock the crap out of him, would you? Seriously. Okay? Just knock the hell. I promise you... I will pay for the legal fees, I promise. I love the old days. You know what they used to do to guys like that when they were in a place like this? They'd be carried out on a stretcher, folks. Hillary wants to abolish, essentially abolish, the Second Amendment. By the way, and if she gets to pick... If she gets to pick her judges, nothing you can do, folks. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is, I don't know. Yeah, this guy has a history of, of playing loose with his words, intentionally designed to <coughs> stir up stir up and fan the fl flames of fear. Remember, Steve, when he went went out there, he said he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and, and his, he wouldn't lose a supporter. This is a guy who knows that his supporters are on the edge. He wants to tee them up to the point where he, during the, the 2016 campaign, okay. he was even threatening that he wouldn't even accept the but election Keith, results. A, this is what that dictators That was a very do. funny comment dictators, from him. No, it's not funny for the president of the United States to threaten okay. to, to murder somebody and to think that he has no consequences was, for, for no, doing so. He didn't That's mean it. It was a joke. funny. But here's the thing. You, 
you can't have it both ways, okay? Because here's what I what I hear constantly from the left: that he's a feckless president, right? Who can't get anything through Congress, can't even pass a bill through the Senate for, from his own Republicans to to back him on the border. But at the same time, he's a tyrant and and a dictator who's going to use national security forces to enforce his rule. Well, which is it? Because those two things are, uh, are you know, don't jive. Uh, in nice other words, try, if he Steve, actually had the tendencies. If, no, if he had the tendencies that he's being accused of by people like just Michael Cohen, he's a, have just no idea he's where bad, he gets his evidence. Just because he's not good at being a dictator doesn't mean he's not trying. Let's just leave it <laughs> okay, at that. Okay, final so word, he's, a, he's an incompetent dictator? That's the best <laughs> Look, you could probably the, say I, for him at this I, point. Okay. I... I wish the president had been had been more careful with his words in this case. I do. But I Thank also you. believe uh, that we on the right, when we are attacked by Antifa, by leftist violence, I live in Chicago and I was at the rally that was shut down by a violent mob in this city that attacked police and Trump supporters. I think the Trump supporters have to be ready to defend I'm themselves. I'm in a building and that's where what the pipe bombs were sent Nobody should be because implying that Trump violence supporter. is an acceptable way to deal with political disagreement. And that's what comments like this imply. That's, that's the fundamental issue. And I think we all agree political violence is unacceptable and un-American. So let's agree on that. Thank you both.